Apple and Google have lost their cases against the European Union. Welcome to Market Insight, I'm Elena Casas. Ireland gave Apple 13 billion euros in unlawful tax breaks that the firm must repay, while Google has lost its fight over a 2.42 billion euro EU antitrust fine. Those are the two major rulings handed down by the European Court of Justice this morning. Both are the final decision in cases that date back to 2016 and 2017, respectively. They are good news for the EU's fight to regulate big tech, but are they good for its economy? To help answer that and more, I'm joined now by Joachim Clement, Head of Strategy at Panmure Liberum. Joachim, hi. What do you think this means then for major international investment in the EU? Well, it is on the margin a bit of a deterrent. Um, the EU has stricter regulations and is increasingly enforcing them with draconian measures. Uh, the two uh, European Court of Justice rulings today are actually from an older regime. But if you think about it, uh, Apple just launched the iPhone 16 and cannot launch its Apple intelligence, its AI, in Europe because of uh, stricter regulations in the EU. So there is clearly, from the regulatory side, an obstacle to investing and even rolling out some of the products that uh, the big tech companies have developed. Dragging its feet on tech was, of course, one of the main things cited yesterday by the former ECB chief Mario Draghi in his report about the structural problems facing the EU. Do you think investors are going to take that conclusion that uh, the EU is too far behind on tech? And could that be detrimental to its own tech firms? I think that the EU has a productivity problem, uh, just like the UK, by the way, but uh, both the EU and the UK are much less productive than the US in comparison. Um, and that is a major problem and it, le uh, it prevents additional investments and prevents uh, foreign direct investments. Now, how do you change that? How you, do you close that productivity gap? Investing in tech certainly helps, um, but there must also be other measures uh, in place, like a less rigid labor market uh, that allows for more flexibility in hiring and firing employees, which is always going to be a very difficult thing to establish in Europe. We are expecting this week, of course, a rate cut from the ECB. Do you think that will give the EU economy a little boost or is the central bank lagging behind? It certainly will give the economy a little boost in, boost in the short term. It will also help the stock market, which has priced in that rate cut already and another rate cut later in the fourth quarter. Uh, so all of that will, will provide short term support. But truly what the EU needs is not monetary stimulus, it is fiscal stimulus. And there is another structural problem that the EU has uh, with its deficit rules, which are very strict uh, and do not differentiate between investment in infrastructure or, or digital uh, investments uh, and government consumption. And as long as those strict budget deficit rules are in place, uh, there will always be a lack of domestic investment on top of uh, a rather reluctant uh, international business environment uh, to invest in Europe. Do you think then that Mario Draghi was right to call for vast public investment to boost European growth in order to attract private investment? Absolutely, that is the way forward. We need more government investments and we need it in such a way that it partners with private investments and it provides the safety net for private investments uh, in the form of loss uh, uh, rules and things like that, where the government takes the first loss on a risky investment, for example. We've been talking more widely about the EU, Joachim, but is the real lack of investment problem here still Germany above all? At the moment, it certainly is Germany. Uh, Germany is at the moment not the growth engine, but the slowdown engine of the EU. It is slowing down. It is heading precariously close to a recession. And uh, it should actually invest far, far more. Yet Germany has not just the EU debt uh, deficit rules to obey, but its own debt break uh, in the constitution, which limits uh, its fiscal uh, maneuvering space even more. And that makes the situation for Germany so difficult. 
Joachim Clement, Head of Strategy at Panmure Liverham, thank you so much for joining us. Well, that's Market Insights. Don't forget, you can watch more videos on Reuters.com.